Hello. Today we'll be looking at uh, flow visualizations, a basic flow visualization uh, in fluid mechanics. Um, so let's, uh, if we if we have to visualize a flow, right? What we need is its velocity vector, which is you know given as such. You you have three components of the velocity vector, and each of those components are functions of space, and they can be a function of time as well. But for the steady flow case. They are only functions of space. So this is along the j or the y direction, and this is along the k or the z direction, right? So let's uh, choose an equation first, which we want to visualize. Let me uh, quickly search for one. I had uh, seen one recently, so I'm hoping to open that up again. Steady flow field equations. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I had seen one in this NPTEL uh, assignment sheet. So let's pick up this equation, right? This is a, this one here is a steady flow field equation because there's no time term in it, but there, there are spatial terms x, y, z. So it's a steady flow field equation. If there was time in it, it would have been an unsteady flow field, right? Uh, let me increase the font size quickly. All right. Let's go to the place where I have all my files and create a file called flow visualization.m. Right. So what we need to do is we need to write functions for each of these uh, components. So you have uh, three components and each of them are individually functions of x, y and z. Right. Let me just uh, copy this quickly. Let me turn off this annoying sound. Right, the first one is u, the second is v, and the third is w. Let's define the first one. It's 2x square minus x times y plus z. Remember, I'm writing dots in front of these uh, uh, multiplication and power of symbols, uh, these operators, because when you put a dot in front of these operators, it operates on each component of this vector. So if I pass in a vector of x values to this function, it'll, uh, this uh, square function will operate on each component of the vector. If I don't write the dot, then I cannot pass a vector of function, or I cannot pass a list of values in place of x. I can only pass a single value. So anyway, so we are going to use, we are going to be using uh, the dot along with the operator. It's always safe to do that. But it depends on your application as well. So the second one is minus uh, x square minus four times x dot y plus y square, and the third, the third one is two times x dot y minus y z plus y square. Right. So you have these three functions defined. What you need to do is you need to plot them, or you need to uh, you need to plot this velocity vector at all the points in a given domain. So you need to define the domain first, right? So if you talk about a two-dimensional domain, if you want to plot this vector at all these spatial locations, x, y, z, you need to define those locations first, right? So before you can plot the vectors at all the x, y, z coordinates, you need to define those coordinates first. So instead of uh, instead of you know doing it by yourself, instead of uh, writing down all these locations yourself, what you can do is you can define, you can give the range of x and you can give the range of y to MATLAB and it will come up with all these locations for you. So you can also give it the range of Z and it will come up with all the X, Y, Z locations in three dimensions. So the only thing that you need to define is the range. So let's uh, define the range first. Let me make it full screen. Or if it is okay, let's, yeah, let's make it full screen. So let's define the range of X. I do that using this command called in space, which gives me a range of Values separated linearly. I want values between minus one to one, and I want let's say six values in between minus one to one. And let me keep the range same for y and z as well. So I just re replace this with uh, y and this with z. Right. Mm, that's okay. 
now i have the range now matlab is going to uh, you know matlab or octave is going to generate all these uh, points in that range and the way it does that is using this function called mesh grid i pass in the ranges of x y and z and i store them in any three variables but let's store it in x y z itself because what i'm doing is i'm replacing uh, the new values with the old ones because i don't need the old ones so what is stored in x y z are the coordinates of the points the x coordinates are stored in x y coordinates in y and z coordinates in z so with that done i can plot the vectors using a command called quiver so quiver if you know if it is it is a you know it's a what do you say mm, it's a basket like thing which where you keep in all your arrows so it's a clever way of calling a function in octave so the the uh, the arguments it takes is the locations where you want the vectors to be and you want the velocity components so i haven't actually calculated the velocity components yet so i can calculate and store uh, the u velocity component in capital u and i pass in the coordinates for v i use the function v and i pass in the coordinates similarly for w i use the function small w and pass in the coordinates and i have my velocity components defined and this is how the function quiver 3 works it takes in the locations and the velocity components let me open up octave and uh, flow visualization yeah that should work uh yeah so as you can see you can see that uh, in fact the vectors are drawn and this is how a flow field actually looks like defined by the defined by that function but you know the vectors some are very small some are large so a better way would be to a better way would be to normalize these vectors the way you do that is Sound. I don't know. Okay, so the way you normalize. Okay, let me pause it and get rid of the sound. Okay. Yeah. So where was I? Mm, uh, I wanted to. Yeah. So the since the arrows were you know there some were really small some were large. What I do is I normalize the arrows or normalize the vectors. The way I do that is I calculate the magnitude of the arrows. Of magnitude of the vectors, the way you do that is you square each term and then you put and you take the square root, right? That's how you find find the magnitude, right? X square plus y square plus z square under root, right? And then I divide each of these by the by the magnitude of the velocity field. And now I should get better vectors, better arrows, yeah. So this is how your flow field actually looks like, right? So this, in fact, is a much better uh, way to look at a flow field than looking at these three equations, right? Let's also do one more thing. This was a steady flow field, but what if you have an unsteady flow field? So if you had an unsteady flow field, your u, v, and w will be also functions of t. So let's just you know. Let's multiply this one by t and maybe uh, multiply this by t square and multiply this by t cube. Right, so these are functions of t now. So you, when you calculate u, v and w, you also need to pass in the value of t. But since uh, once uh, before this we were drawing uh, the velocity field for a steady flow field, only one uh, plot was enough. But when you do it for unsteady, you need plots at every time interval, at each time instance. So then you would need to do this in a loop. So let's do that. Let me put this in a loop. Right. So for i or for t, time that goes from zero to inter intervals of zero point one to let's say five. I calculate u v and w u mag and yeah, I plot it and then I write a command called draw now. So what it does is every time in each uh, run of the loop it updates my figure the, the draw now command does that so now if i run this you can see that the field is changing right so this is how you visualize unsteady flow fields so i hope this was a although quick this was a um, good introduction to basic flow visualization and 
fluid mechanics so thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one